Yo, kiddo, have I got a story for you. Once upon a time on Melmac, in the good old days of yore, there were enchanted blurps and wicked old snurps hanging out behind the dungeon door. Once upon a time on Melmac, there was a gilch with a castle or two. There was a two-legged glock living under a rock who looked a little bit like you. There was a fire-breathing Vespa with breath just like a torch. And every time he said, good morning, he'd burn down your whole front porch. But those were good old days because they were once upon a time on Melmac. And what a once upon a time it was. Yes, indeed, those were the good old days. And that's no baloney. Or as we say on Melmac, no tabby burger. And hey, guess what? I'm going to tell you a Melmac fairy tale right now. It's kind of like Little Red Riding Hood, only in my version, instead of a big bad wolf, there's a big bad Hoover Haven. It all started back when I was a kid on Melmac, and my name was Gordon, Gordon Shumway. Actually, I prefer Alf. But enough explanation. Let's get on with the story of... Oh, wait a minute. How about a fanfare? Can I have a fanfare, please? Da 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 Thank you. The story of Little Red Riding Elf. That's me. So anyway, one day my mom tells me to take a basket full of Nern cakes to my granny, who lives in the woods. You know, near the pepper mines of Bandorf. She hands me the basket and says, Just go straight to Granny's house, and whatever you do, don't stop and talk to any Hoover Havens. Well, you can imagine what kind of challenge that was to a yellow-blooded alien kid like me. So anyway, oh, wait a minute, hold on, stop the tape. No, no, I don't mean shut me off. I mean, I just thought of something. You've probably never met a Hoover Haven. Well, not to worry. I mean, it's true. Hoover Havens are the ugliest creatures on Melmac. But that doesn't mean they're totally disgusting. No, just mildly disgusting. Hey, as the song says, everybody's beautiful to someone. That's right. Um. Yeah, everybody's beautiful to someone. Whoever they may be. Uh-huh, everybody's beautiful. Oh, yeah, even if they aren't to you and me. Now consider your average Hoover Haven, the ugliest dude you'll ever find. But to his mama, he's a bit of Hoover heaven. On a scale of one to ten, he gets a nine. Everybody's beautiful to someone, whoever or whatever they may be. Everybody's beautiful. Oh, yeah, it all depends on what you want to see. Even though his nose is a big, ugly trunk, and he walks on his knuckles and smells like a skunk, his knees are knobby, and his eyes are blurry, his clothes don't match, and his teeth are furry, but everybody's beautiful to someone, whoever they may be. Uh-huh, everybody's beautiful. Oh, yeah, it all depends on what you want to see. Phew, okay, back to the story. So I'm bopping along with my basket of Nern cakes, making up Hoover Haven jokes. Oh, hey, why don't I tell you one of them right now? You ready? What happens when five Hoover Havens fall in a river? Eh, time's up. <laughs> what happens when five Hoover Havens fall in a river? They get wet. Ha, <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Pretty funny, huh? Well, I thought so. Anyway, I'm bopping along. When all of a sudden, who do you think jumps out of the bushes? A real Hoover Haven. Uh, where are you going, my little Melmacian? He says. To Granny's house, I say. Want to come along? Well, naturally, this is not what the hateful Hoover expects to hear. I mean, Hoover Havens never get invited anywhere. Because they're so ugly, remember? So instead of gobbling me up, the Hoover Haven says... Uh, sounds good. Lead the way. Ha! Oh, that ugly Hoover must have been late for class when they passed out the brains. He thinks he's going to come along and have my granny for a snack, right? Eh, wrong! See, if you think my mom sounded like a tough cookie, then you ought to meet my granny, which is exactly what the Hoover Haven was about to do. And guess what? Instead of sneaking around the back like any normal monster... The Hoover goes right up to Granny's door and rings the bell. 
Why, hello, Gordon, dear, says Granny. Come on in. So me and the Hoover Haven stroll right in. Oh, I see you've brought along a Hoover Haven, she says. Come in, Mr. Hoover Haven, and have some tea. Well, now the poor old Hoover is really confused. I mean, no one ever offered him tea before. So he says, uh, uh thank you, ma'am. Uh, don't mind if I do. And then, sure enough, Granny starts in on him right away. Why, Mr. Hooverhaven, she says, what big ears you have. In fact, your ears are so big, you could tie them under your chin and use them for a bib. And before the Hooverhaven could say a word, that's just what Granny did. She actually tied his ears under his chin. Then guess what Granny says next. She says, why, Mr. Hooverhaven, what a big nose you have. It would be the perfect place to hang my laundry. Ha! Do you think she actually did it? You got it. She pulled his nose straight out, stuck a couple of clothespins on it, and hung up her undies. Ha! Well, by now, the poor Hoover Haven is so upset, he runs out the door before Granny can tell him what big teeth he has. Ha! So then Granny turns to me and says, I'm sorry, Gordon. I didn't mean to chase your friend away. Was it something I said? Ah, uh, don't worry, Granny, I say, as I give her a big hug. He'll be all right, <laughs> even if his face does look like a pepperoni pizza. Everybody's beautiful to someone, whoever they may be. Uh-huh, everybody's beautiful to someone. It all depends on what you want to see. Some people say that I'm unattractive. They tell me I'm disgusting and worse. But if they could see me through my eyes, hey, I look like Mr. Universe. Whoa, everybody's beautiful to someone. It doesn't matter, whoever they may be. Everybody's beautiful to someone. I am beautiful to me. Ha, would I lie to you? It's an actual fact. Now sing along with my natural rap. Everybody's beautiful to someone. Whoever they may be. Uh-huh, everybody's beautiful to someone. It all depends on what you want to see. Hey, you're good at that. Yeah, get down. You know, it's not all fun and games being one of the beautiful people. Like you and me, I mean. For instance, did you ever hear the fairy tale about Beauty and the Beast? Well, on Melmac, we had a story just like it. Only it's called Beauty and the Alpha. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you about Beauty. This Beauty was a little different than the one you may be used to. She always got her own way about everything. Hey, let's not mince words. She was a spoiled brat. I mean, she was so spoiled, whenever she went to a friend's birthday party, she blew out the candles on the cake. Ha! But the old Alfred didn't care about that. He was still pretty crazy about her. And one day he says to Beauty, Beauty, how'd you like to come over to my house after styrofoam class? And Beauty took one look at the old Alpha and said, Forget it, Buster. Ha! <laughs> Talk about letting a guy down easy. But did the Alpha give up? Nah. He sent Beauty flowers. He even bought her some of her favorite kitty cologne. Of course, all his pals thought he'd really lost his marbles. Especially his friend Chlorine. Because she really liked the old Alpha. She thought he was the best-looking guy on Melmac. But the old Alpha only had eyes for beauty, and he kept asking her over till she finally thought, Hey, what could it hurt? Maybe the guy will do my homework. So, there was the Alpha finally getting to spend some time with his dream girl. A dream come true, right? Eh. Wrong! Because as soon as beauty got there, the Alpha decided to do some Alpha-type things. You know the Alpha, he's a jokester, a clown, a funny guy. So he says to her, knock, knock. N now you pretend you're beauty and say, who's there? Snow, said the Alpha. Uh, now you say, snow who? Snowbody here but the Alpha. Ha! Ah! Oh, I thought that was a pretty funny one. But all beauty said was, uh, like I guess I'm not in the mood for knock, knock jokes right now. Or ever. <laughs> so the Alpha thought he'd try another approach. How about a poem, he asked. A poem, said Beauty. Well, it can't be any worse than your knock-knock joke. 
What is it? So the Alpher swallowed hard and started to read his poem, which was called Ode to a Glortz. It went something like this. <clears throat> On a tropical island, in tank top and shorts, lived the only surviving fur-bellied glortz. How tired he'd grown of the sand and the ocean, how bored with the beach and the sun tanning lotion. The snorps and the dimnits all loved summer sports, but they just overheated that fur-bellied glortz. He longed to wear mittens and parkas and snowshoes instead of dark glasses and sun hats and no shoes. Then one fateful day, it occurred to the glorts to open a string of successful resorts. So he packed up his bags and stuck his big thumb out and kept going north until it was numb out. He settled down under the name of Joe Blortz and built a big ski lodge, a palace of sorts. So he's happy and fat now, say most recent reports, cause there's no place like Gnome for a fur-bellied glortz. Ah! Well, Beauty liked that part about the nice resorts, but that's all she liked. Oh, yuck, she said. Gag me with a steam shovel. Well, it was obvious this romance was going nowhere. So Beauty left, and the old Alpha felt pretty bad. Until the door flew open with a crash, and there stood Chlorine, holding two orders of feline and fries with gravy. Well... You know how the old Alpha feels about feline and fries. So, from that day on, Chlorine and the Alpha became real good friends. And the old Alpha changed his mind about who was really beautiful. Which just goes to show you. Everybody's beautiful to someone. Whoever or whatever they may be. Everybody's beautiful. Oh yeah, it all depends on what you want to see. So don't you worry when you look in a mirror if you're a Hoover Haven or a Beazle. Come over here and sit a little nearer. Hey to me, you're the Mona Liesel. Yeah, everybody's beautiful to someone. Whoever they may be. That's right. Everybody's beautiful to someone. You are beautiful to me. That's right. You heard it. You. Now don't go away, because I got jokes and rhymes. Just turn my tape over for some more great times. Ah! Once upon a time on Melmac, there was a gilch with a castle or two. There was a two-legged glock living under a rock who looked a little bit like you. That was once upon a time on Melmac. And what a once upon a time it was. Yo, have I got another story for you. It's about a birthday party I went to once, back on Melmac. Of course, birthday parties on Melmac are a little different than birthday parties on Earth. On Melmac, everybody's birthday is the same day. Uh-huh, the ninth of rubbish. But this birthday party was in honor of my friend, Justine Mothbait. And it was a real smasheroo. I mean, I almost didn't go because I didn't have anything fancy to wear. I used to have a shark skin suit, but the shark took it back. <laughs> ah! ah! Yeah, anyway, uh, I decided to go to the party, and you're never going to believe what happened. But trust me, it's as true as any other Cinderella story. Oh, you better make that Cinderalf. So there I am, sitting in my room, at home, I've just called out for a Siamese and anchovy pizza, when all of a sudden, there's this puff of smoke, and who do you think appears? Uh-uh, not my fairy godmother. This is Cinder Alf, remember? No, it's my fairy godfather, Teddy Mudman. Teddy, my man, I say, where you been all these years? Oh, I've been away, says the big guy, at fairy godfather school. So, Gordon, how come you're not getting ready for Justine's birthday party? Hey, give me a break, I say. Have you taken a look at my wardrobe lately? I mean, yesterday I washed my designer jeans, and now they're designer shorts. And on top of that, the little alligator on my shirt ate one of my sleeves. And a button. Oh, well, looks like we got our work cut out for us, says Teddy. If you want to impress a girl like Justine, 
You gotta dress up to the max. And then, I kid you not, Teddy snaps his fingers, and all of a sudden I'm dressed in the absolute smoothest of pink tuxedos. I mean triple pleats, peg cuffs, the works, including the coolest pair of blue suede shoes you ever saw. Oh man, that's class, says Teddy. And now, for the piece de resistance, your car. And then Teddy snaps his fingers one more time. And you're never going to believe this. A calamari turbo appears out of nowhere. Can you believe it? My dream car. Thanks, Teddy, I say. I am out of here. Hey, hold it, Gordo. There's just one little thing I haven't told you. What's that, I ask? Well, says Teddy, you gotta be home by midnight, or else your car turns into a cantaloupe. And then, all of a sudden, Teddy Mudman is gone in another puff of smoke. Hey, <coughs> I cough. Teddy, you gotta get out of that smoking habit. It's bad for my health. Well, I show up at the birthday party in my pink tuxedo, and every party animal on Melmac is there. The band is playing, and the kitty cola is flowing. As I walk through the door, they all stop and stare. I take off my shades, and I slick back my hair. I step into the room, the band starts to play, and then I blow those bozos away, yay, yay! I take a step to the left, I take a step to the right, I shake my fur all over, I shake it all night, I do the alien, yeah, the alien bop, a well a ram a lam a ding dong shoo up, shoo up. And then I see her, Justine Mothbake. There she stands, neath the moons up above. She walks up to me and says, I think I'm in love. You look so cool. You look so fine. And I'm going to make you mine, all mine. We take a step to the left. We take a step to the right. We shake our fur all over. We shake it all night. We do the alien. Yeah, the alien bop. Oh, well, a ram a lama ding dong shoo wop shoo wop ram a lama ding dong shoo wop shoo wop Yeah. So Justine and I danced and danced till our fur drooped. Then we took a break and we played pin the tail on the lettuce. And then we topped it all off with a fun game of spin the piano. Anyway, before I knew it, it was time for the last dance. And then all of a sudden, I happened to glance at my watch. And yikes! It was one minute till midnight. Hey, Justine, I said, it's been great. Sorry, I gotta run. And then I headed for the parking lot as fast as I could. I would have made it too, but I slipped on a cheese ball and tumbled head over paws into the punch bowl. By the time I got to my car, it was too late. Let me ask you something. Have you ever tried to drive home in a cantaloupe? Yeah, well, it's no picnic. Ha! It's not even brunch. And I didn't even notice that I lost one of my shoes until the next morning. Now try to picture this. The doorbell rings. I stumble out of bed, peek through the shade. Oh, no, I say to myself. It's Justine. Gordon, she says. You lost your shoe last night. Just try it on so I know it was really you. Hey, hey, wait a minute, I say. We danced a little. We had a few chuckles. What more do you want? Well, I want to go steady, says Justine. Right now. Oh, gee, I say. Uh, don't you think we're a little young for that? I mean, we're only 115. What about being best friends? Gordon, she asks. Are you hiding something from me? It's another girl, isn't it? Justine, I cry. Lamb chop. There's nobody else, I swear. I mean, the only thing I like more than you is my styrofoam collection. Well, says Justine, I'm not sure I like playing second fiddle to styrofoam. But you are so cute. Well, when she talks like that, my ears begin to tingle and my snout begins to jingle. And I know right away she's the alien for me. I'm crazy about her eyes. All three. She's got emerald lips and ruby red teeth. And her ode to Pluto knocks me off of my feet. Everybody dance. Take a step to the left. Take a step to the right. Shake your fur all over. Yeah, shake it all night. Do the alien. Yeah, the alien bop. Well, a ram a lam a ding dong. Do wop she wop. Try it. Just do what the song says. Take a step to the left, take a step to the right. Shake your fur all over. 
Shake it all night. Do the alien. Yeah. The alien bop. Boella rama lama ding dong. Do up shoo up. Rama lama ding dong. Do up shoo up. Yeah. I'll tell you, kiddo, I'm just having too much fun. Kind of reminds me of the time I invited some pals over for a barbecue. But our dinner ran up a tree. It was a real catastrophe. Ah, get it? The cat ran up a tree. Well, anyway, speaking of cats, have you ever heard the fairy tale about Puss in Boots? Now, there was a real smarty cat. He told everybody his master was a genuine prince. Ha! Prince Schmintz. The guy was a yahoo from nowhere. Anyway, Puss fixed it so his master married a real princess. And from then on, it was nothing but catnaps at the castle for Puss in Boots. Man, you gotta admire a guy like that even if he is a cat. Now I'm going to tell you the Melmac version of that story. Only our cat was a little different. Oh, he wore boots all right. I think they were made out of poodle fur or something. But he sure wasn't called Puss. In fact, he wasn't called anything because he was the cat with no name. He rode into town with a jingle in his spurs. A tall, handsome stranger with trail dust on his fur. His purr was mean and low down, his eye a glowing flame. Out here they fear the cat, yeah, the cat with no name. Get along, little kitties. Yeehaw! Get along down the trail. You see, it all started with the great cat roundup of 58. Boy, we had some fat cats on Melmac that year. Some of them went two, three hundred pounds. Oh, hey, hey, here's one for you. Where do you think a three hundred pound cat sleeps? Anywhere he wants to. Ah! Oh, here's another one. What do you get when a three hundred pound cat sneezes? Out of the way, that's what. So as I was saying, way back in 58, things were tough out west. Oh, west Melmac, I mean. Foam was in short supply. You couldn't get a decent glass of lemonade anywhere. And worst of all, there was no lady aliens in the whole territory. In fact, the only thing they had a lot of was cats. All kinds of cats. I mean, you had your calico, your Siamese, your Himalayan. Well, no sense listing them all. It's making me drool. Anyway, my cousin Harlow Shumway went out west to become a cat herder. Well, things went along fine for a while, but then a bad guy called Jake the Snake came along. And he started stealing the cats from the other ranchers. Pretty sleazy, huh? So Cousin Harlow said, Boys, it's time to stop Jake the Snake from stealing all our kitties. I think we could use some help. And quicker than you could say puss in boots, the saloon door swung open and a tall stranger appeared out of nowhere. He was all dressed in black, and even wore a black mask over his eyes. But there was no mistaking him for what he really was. The biggest, most humongous, 300-pound cat anybody'd ever seen. And he walked right up to Cousin Harlow and said, Ah, here you're looking for some help. Boys, said Cousin Harlow, I think we done found our man. <laughs> I, I mean cat. Well, it didn't take long for the cat with no name to live up to his reputation. That same night at midnight, he went out to Jake the Snake's ranch and, well, I'll tell you about it in a song. At the stroke of midnight, as a lone coyote howled, the stranger walked down Main Street. He was on the prowl. He headed straight for Jake the Snake's and walked up to the door. And folks round there were sure They'd never see him anymore. But just as Jake was laughing at the stranger he had feared, a tail switched out and suddenly a hundred more appeared. Big cats from out of nowhere, and Jake knew why they came. To help that pesky stranger, the cat with no name. All right, Jake, said the stranger. What's it gonna be? Let the kitties go, or fight me and my buddies? Well, Jake the Snake was mean and evil, but he wasn't dumb. He stood his ground and snarled. Yeah, okay, big shot. 
You win! This time! They hooted and they hollered as they freed the kitty herd. And Jake could only stand there and utter not one word. Then the stranger turned to him, and how this must have stung. He said, what's the matter, Jake? Ha! Cat got your tongue? Get it? Cat got your tongue? Ha! It's like a joke. It is a joke. Ha! Kill me. No Shumway now remembers just how the tale began, or when this fearless feline first stalked across our land. But every day the legend grows, each child is told the myth of the only cat a Shumway ever ate dinner with. Ha! 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 Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs>